Welcome to the world famous destination of Rome, Italy. Some people come to stand before the finest of art and architecture, and other people come to soak in the ancient history of what is said to be the Eternal City. But today we've come to Rome to indulge in the country's rich and exquisite cuisine and to try our hand at traditional pasta making. Kind of like the French food tour, I'm a little bit nervous to do this one just because I want to do the Italian cuisine justice, but as always, I'm gonna do my best, I'm gonna have fun with it, and so with that, let's go grab some brunch. running all around town and honestly panicking because it seems like August is the time that all Italians want to take a little vacation. And so all the restaurants that we had researched and saved uh, were closed, unfortunately. But luckily we did have one more saved. We are here now and they're open and ready to serve us some delicious Italian food. So I've ordered, I believe, five things from their menu. We're gonna feast up. The very first dish we're trying today is prosciutto e melone. And this is a very classic dish to hit the tables of Italy in the summertime. And so I think we've caught it right before it disappears into the autumn. This is essentially a two ingredient dish of prosciutto and melon. And I think that like saltiness from the prosciutto and the sweetness from the melon just complement really well. And that is why they love it here so much. The presentation is very interesting. You can't really see the melon, but if you take all the prosciutto off, it reveals those orange beauties. That is fantastic. It's so fresh, a little bit sweet, a little bit salty. Next up, we have the caprice salad, and this is a very light salad made from mozzarella, tomatoes, and basil. But this isn't any kind of mozzarella. This is mozzarella di bufala, and it is probably the king of all the mozzarellas. This cheese is made from the milk of the Italian water buffalo, so very, very special. So excited to try it, and I love that it kind of looks like the Italian flag in color. So throughout our entire meal, I've been watching these two women making pasta in the corner, and they look so happy. And I believe we're about to try some of their homemade pasta. So this here is cacio e pepe, which directly translates to cheese and pepper. So you've got two ingredients, and you toss in some of that homemade pasta, and you've got yourself one of the simplest dishes here in Italy. The waiter did say that it's gonna be very salty, which I did find a little concerning, but you know, the saltiest things are always the tastiest, so it's gotta be real good. So as I indulge in the bounciest homemade pasta I've ever eaten, I'm just kind of reminded of something that we experienced over in France, and that is just basically eating really good quality ingredients. So back home, we always go to the supermarket, we buy some factory-made pasta, we throw it in a pot, and then we just scarf it up for dinner. But here, we are having delicious homemade pasta because two women woke up this morning and put their love and time into making some homemade pasta so that we can indulge in it right now. And I just love that. And it's the same thing with the cheese and with the meats. It's all time and quality, and you can really taste it. Wow. We are now taking a step away from the savory and the salty and we're stepping into dessert territory which is my favorite time of day. So first thing we have here is panna cotta. This is sweetened cream with thickened gelatin and you can get it with all sorts of toppings. We have it here. <laughs> oh my goodness! And here's the owner of the restaurant. <laughs> He was behind you for like five to ten seconds. Really? Well, I was so focused on my panna cotta, I didn't even know. <laughs> Anyhow, you can get this with all sorts of toppings. You can get it with berries or with chocolate. We have it here with some blueberries and some blackberries. And fun little story for you, when I was in middle school, I actually woke up in the middle of the night, I believe at like 3 to 4 a.m. to make my mom some panna cotta for breakfast for her birthday. So I know it takes a bit of work to create this lovely dessert. Ooh, very bouncy. That is so good. It's like an extremely thick and creamy pudding. And the fruits are like the perfect little touch. I think this is probably one of the most classic Italian desserts. Here we have tiramisu, and the literal translation means pick me up. And that has a lot to do with the coffee content that is inside of this dessert. So in here we've got espresso and cocoa, sugar, lady fingers, mascarpone, all the good things. You can see all the delicious layers. Mmm, smells like a coffee shop. One of my favorite desserts of all time.
So as we're walking to our next destination, we actually stumbled across the Pantheon. It is one of the most well-preserved buildings that was built all the way back in 126 to 128 AD. And it's a lot bigger in person than I thought, because as I'm telling, compared to the other buildings that are around it, it's about eight stories tall. <laughs> One in a million. I'm truly mesmerized by how many coins are in the fountain behind me. I believe this fountain actually gets 3,000 euros a day and that all of that money goes towards donation, which is really sweet. But the reason why people throw so many coins back there is because there's this myth that says if you do, you will come back to Rome. And if you toss a second one in there, you'll fall in love. If you toss a third one in there, you're gonna get married. So I think it's kind of pointless that we do it because we're already here in Rome. We're already in love and we're already married. So, you know, let's not curse what we've got. <laughs> so while Claire was just talking, I noticed that someone reached their hand in the fountain and grabbed a coin out and walked away. <laughs> so I guess someone's wish is definitely not coming true. <laughs> We just did a little bit of ornament shopping. So this is gonna be our ornament for Italy. And I've actually been eyeing this all the way since Venice. And that was four cities ago. And so I'm so glad that I finally got it. It's a little Pinocchio and it's actually one that moves. So if you pull the string, it's little arms and legs will fly up. And I just love that it's also the same colors as Italy's flag. So it'll be our little dynamic ornament for our tree. <laughs> The food tour continues on. You can't come to Italy and not try their gelato. So gelato is basically like an ice cream, but it's made with less air. Here we have some coconut and then some coffee. Believe it or not, we've been in Italy for like a couple weeks now. We haven't tried gelato yet. Have we really not? <laughs> yeah, we have not. And we have been missing out. <laughs> starting off dinner with some Aperol spritz and this is something that we had over in Venice. So if you missed that video, we tried lots of different traditional Venetian foods and we'll link it up there for you um, if you'd like to join us for a day in Venice. Let's see if it's better here or in Venice. Mm. It tastes the exact same. <laughs> Are these not the prettiest little things in the world? They look like blooming flowers, kind of like the blooming onion that you can get in the U.S., but obviously way better. <laughs> so this here is Karchofi Yala Dudia. And this is a Jewish artichoke that has been twice fried in olive oil and then sprinkled over with salt and pepper. And it looks super, super crispy. Just beautiful presentation. Oh my goodness. It's like a little chip. Better than the Bloomin' Onion? Oh, way better than the Bloomin' Onion. <laughs> All apologies for comparing this to the Bloomin' Onion, but this is so good. It tastes like a really good veggie potato chip. Here we have a little metal bowl of soupli, and these are fried rice balls that are mixed with meat sauce and cheese. And in the middle, there is another little ball of mozzarella cheese. So let's break it open and find that cheesy goodness. That is amazing. All right, let's taste it. We all saw it coming. We got ourselves a pizza here in Rome, Italy. And I feel like this is one of the most influential dishes on the planet. I mean, it inspired pizza rolls, bagel bites, hot pockets, you name it. And here we have some cheese, some tomato sauce, and also some spicy sausage. And it looks like the crust is nice. Nice and thick. Ooh, and it's hot. I just touched it. It's burning my fingers. <laughs> Tomorrow's lunch. Yes. You got it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> we got lollipops. For the first time in the history of my life, 
I had a server named Chad, and that was really nice. Yeah, and he wasn't white. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We are walking home with 10 different Italian foods in our stomachs, and we are feeling very, very happy. But with that, we're gonna end day one in Rome here, and we'll catch you tomorrow for some more food. Buon pomeriggio, it is another beautiful day here in Rome, Italy, and we're going to be checking off something that's been on my bucket list for the longest time ever. We're going to go and learn how to make pasta from scratch from a local chef. And this is all thanks to Get Your Guide. And if you don't know what Get Your Guide is, they offer over 60,000 experiences in more than 3,600 destinations around the world. And all the experiences they provide are with knowledgeable local experts. So whether you're looking for tickets or guides to the biggest tourist sites in a city, or if you're looking looking for more unique experiences like going truffle hunting with the cutest dogs over in Tuscany or hearing a live Italian orchestra perform in Venice. They have got you set. And I think one of our favorite things is their 24 seven customer service and the fact that everything sits perfectly on their app so you don't have to worry about printing anything out. And also you can cancel up to 24 hours before your tour which is a lifesaver because travel plans will always change when you're on the go. And of course, if you just aren't into guided tours, they do have skip the line options. So you can just basically go straight into the museum, the cathedral, the mosque without the hassle of standing in a very, very long line. So we want to say a huge thank you to Get Your Guide for supporting what we do. And let's head on over and learn how to make some pasta. We get cute little aprons to wear. Our pasta recipe today calls for 100 grams of flour, one egg, and a little splash of olive oil, and this ratio should make just about one serving. After making a little volcano shape with our flour, we're cracking the egg in the middle and whisking it smooth with a fork. Once the ingredients are thoroughly mixed, it is time to knead, and this might be one of the most important parts of the process because it's kind of what gives the pasta the bounciness we all crave and desire. It's the ultimate test. We have to press the dough to see if it bounces back. <gasps> it has bounced back. That means it's ready. put our pasta dough to rest in the fridge and in the meantime we're gonna go and make some pasta sauce. What I need you to do, we're gonna put the guanciale medium heat, no low, no high, medium heat. No oil. No, this is a really good question, ask question, why we don't put any fat? Because this is gonna make oil. Yes, correct. How's it going Claire? <laughs> well, I have a very important task of stirring this meat. Look what we got here. Look how much fat it really is. Now they will reach the crispiness because they brownish. Now we can remove it. This one chale, now that is ready. Okay. Nice, like that. Go with the passata. All these things, all the sounds of love, you know, when you open things and stuff, I love it. We don't want to waste any tomato in the can. Yeah, no waste. <laughs> Our dough babies are now up from their nap and we're going to run them through the flattening machine. This is apparently the exact same model as the ones housewives used back in the 1930s when they were making pasta during the war. After running our dough through the machine about four times, we're going to put them through the guitar. Fun fact for you, there are actually over 600 different shapes of pasta, which means you could eat a different shape of pasta for over a year and a half and not repeat the same shape. Of course, we cannot forget about dessert. Tonight we're having some homemade melon gelato with mint and basil. It tastes so summery and fresh and seriously the perfect ending to such a memorable class. The class was so much fun and the instructors were just so passionate about what they're doing and when someone's passionate about what they're doing that's when you know you're gonna have a good time so we had 
a fantastic evening and we are back getting another round of gelato and i actually asked on instagram what flavors you guys recommended and there was like an outstanding number of people who said pistachio and hazelnut so that is what we have here tonight but i think we're gonna end our food tour video here thank you so much for joining us here in rome and if you'd like to join us as we travel to 50 countries around the world hit subscribe and as always, we want to say a really big thank you to everyone who's supporting us over on Patreon and cheering us on through everything that we're doing. And with that, we'll catch you in another place here in Italy. Bye!